This book is starting to make me emotional because I remember some of the things in this book. I don't remember everything, but I do remember enough to miss home, quote unquote. Whew. So yeah, I was getting teary eyed as I was previewing this chapter. Um, I did write some notes and basically the first house I think um, is when Michael meets Blue. You know what? Let me just read the book and you guys can make your own notes. Okay, so this is chapter four, the first house. The next morning dawned a bit dreary, but Mike's spirits were high. With some eager funds that he had saved, Michael purchased a large breakfast, which he ate on the patio of a local bistro. It felt odd to be outside at this time of day. Normally, he was working by now, used to toiling all day, eating a sack lunch at his desk and having the sun go down out of his eyesight while he was still in the confines of the building. With satchels in hand and the bag over his shoulder, Mike stood outside the diner wondering exactly which way to go. He knew that he could not head west since the ocean would soon intervene. East it was then until he was shown another route. Appropriately, Mike felt pretty good about beginning a trip built on faith, but he still wished he had a more clear destination. If only I had some sense of direction, a map perhaps, or an indication of my current position, Mike said to himself as he plodded eastward, passing very slowly through the suburbs of Los Angeles towards the foothills of yet another endless neighborhood. It's going to take weeks to walk out of here, thought Mike. Mike didn't really know where he was going, but he just kept heading east. At lunchtime, he sat down on a curb and consumed the leftovers he had saved from breakfast and again wondered if he was on the right path. If you're there, I need you now, said Mike out loud to the sky. Where is the gate to the path? A current map, it shall be, Mike heard a familiar voice speaking in his ear. He stood up and looked around but saw no one. He recognized the voice of the original angel. Did I hear that or feel it? muttered Mike under his breath with a sense of relief. At least there was some communication. What took you so long? asked Mike with some humor. You only asked for help a moment ago, replied the voice. But I've been wandering for hours. That's your choice, stated the voice. What took you so long to verbalize your request to us? The voice was obviously having fun, turning Mike's objection back at him. You mean that I only get help when I ask? Yes, what a concept, replied the voice. You are a free spirit, honored and powerful and able to make your own way if that's your choice. It's what you've been doing all your life. We are always here, but only active when you ask. Is that so odd? Mike was momentarily irritated by the absolute logic of the angel's words. You guys, yes. Like, when people are logical and have no feelings, I get irritated too. And sometimes I feel like earth angels because we probably have, we probably all have earth angels or people who are a little more seasoned spiritually than we are. And like... So one of my earth angels I mentioned the other day, his name is Vlad, Vladimir. He would be so logical and just like so detached and it drove me crazy. Um, so yeah, but uh, what the angels said is true. We all are a free spirit and we, if we want help, we have to ask for it and we are the creators of our reality so um, we are powerful we are able to make our own way um, because that's what we've been doing all our life but we also can ask for help if we feel overwhelmed or challenged okay where do I go it's past noon and I feel that I've been guessing all morning about which direction to walk Good guessing, replied the voice with an implied wink. The gate to the path is just ahead. You mean I was headed for it all along? 
Don't be so shocked that you went right to it. You are a piece of the whole, Michael Thomas of Pure Intent. With practice, your intuition will serve you well. I am here today only to help steer you in, a, in small ways. The voice hesitated. Look ahead. You're already at the gate. Michael stood in front of a large hedge that led into a canyon between rows of houses. So that's another thing I've noticed. The angels or guides that are in your life, they can't override your free will. So they can only give you like little nuggets. They can't give you like full gemstones. Uh, Michael stood in front of a large head that led into a canyon between rows of houses. I don't see anything. Look again, Michael Thomas. Mike stared at the bush and slowly realized that there was an outline of a gate. It had been hidden by the fact that it blended in and looked like part of the overall structure of the plant. Now it seemed that he could not couldn't not see the gate even if he wanted to oh my gosh that is so true you guys so there was the song um we belong together by mariah carey i watch reaction videos and this one lady would sing gosh what was she saying you guys um i am genetically predisposed to sing off key so don't worry about my singing Like she was singing that and then people in her comments would be like, you know, Mariah is singing. Who else? Like, you know how she goes, who else am I going to lean on when times get tough? And then uh, the background vocals are who else? So <laughs> the lady, like she pointed that out to me because I thought it was like, oh, wow. You know, and then I was like, oh, now I clearly hear it. So like when you guys hear things or see things it's kind of hard not to unsee it it's like those perception um not pictures but like you know the old woman and the young woman or even better the ballerina on youtube and you see her going one way but then you see her going the other way like once you see the other way you cannot unsee it so that's pretty cool and I feel like that's like what consciousness, once you reach a certain level of consciousness, you cannot unknown things. Um, let's see. It had been hidden by the fact that it blended in and looked like part of the overall structure of the plant. Now it seemed that he couldn't not see the gate even if he wanted to. It was so obvious. He turned away for a moment, then looked at it again with a new perception. There it was, now even clearer than it was a moment ago. What is happening? asked Mike, aware that his perception was changing. When unseen things become obvious, the gentle voice said, you can't go backwards into ignorance. You will now see all gates clearly since you gave intent for this one. Although Mike didn't fully understand the significance of what was being given to him, given him he was all too ready to move onto the main path of his journey the head stopped resembling a gate and actually became one right before mike's eyes it was changing and growing in its definition this is a miracle whispered mike as he continued to watch the tall hedge transform into a tangible gate he even backed up slightly to allow room for the phenomenon to occur not really, replied the voice. Your spiritual intent just shifted you slightly and the items that vibrate at your new level simply have snapped into view. No miracle. It's just the way it works. Okay, y'all, this is crazy. Your spiritual intent just shifted you slightly and the items that vibrate at your new level simply have snapped into view. It was there all along, you guys. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. Wow, that is crazy. I'm thinking of so many things that we might have missed, but if you had the level of consciousness, a higher level of consciousness, they wouldn't be missed. Um, you mean my consciousness can change reality, questioned Mike. 
Semantics, replied the voice, reality is the essence of God and is constant. Your human consciousness only reveals the new parts of it you wish to experience. As you change, more of it comes into view and you may experience and use the many new revelations as you wish, but you cannot go backwards. You guys, so what this is reminding me right now is of those Mandela effects of those reality shifts you know how items might disappear but then they reappear oh my gosh this is crazy you guys mike was beginning to understand but he had an additional question before he started down the path through the newly exposed gate before him he was always ready to test everything for truth even the angelic voice he was hearing in his mind mike formed his question and stated it you said I was a creature of free choice. Why can't I go backwards if I choose to? What if I want to ignore the new reality and return to a simpler choice? Isn't that free choice? Okay, so you guys, I had watched The Matrix hmm, maybe two or three weeks ago. And the guy that uh, sold Morpheus out, he wanted to go back. And he really couldn't because he knew too much. Um, he ended up dying, but he was just like, I want to take the blue pill again. Like if he had a choice, he would have taken the blue pill instead of the red pill. And, um, he tried to go back and he couldn't, he ended up dying. And just like in Genesis, um, there was Lot's wife. She tried to look back and she turned into a pillar of salt. There's a certain, I guess, spiritual law that says you can't go back. I mean, of course, we have free will, but we really can't go back. So he was always ready to test everything for truth, even the angelic voice he was hearing in his mind. So that reminds me, like, people can hear spirit guides. For me, I get downloads either as I'm reading or in dreams or if I'm listening to other people. But you guys, are do you hear the voice of these spirit guides? I'm just curious. Um, and then um, me and Eduardo, he would like try to get me to see things his way and bless his heart for trying. And I understand like reading this book puts things into perspective and it's like he would always tell me you're coming from the mind and it's like you really can't come from the mind to understand the things of the spirit. So things are like really making sense right now. It is the physics of spirituality. So I'm answering and reading what the angel is answering. Um, so Mike just asks, you said I was a creature of free choice. Why can I go backwards if I choose to? What if I want to ignore the new reality and return to a simpler one? Isn't that free choice? It is the physics of spirituality that creates an axiom that states you will never be able to return to a less aware state, replied the voice. If you actively choose to try, however, then you're denying the enlightenment you've been given and you'll become unbalanced. So that was that guy in the matrix. Indeed, you're able to try to move backwards. It is your free will. However, sad indeed are those humans who try to ignore what they know is truth, for they will not last long with a dual vibratory rate. Okay, so that is facts. Um, Mike didn't understand all the new spiritual information that the voice was imparting to him. And I didn't understand it the first time around. So I'm actually lucky to be able to read this. And um, it's kind of self-serving because as I read this out loud, I'm getting downloads and I'm understanding what the angels are saying, having read the book the first time. He did receive the answer. However, to his question, he knew he could turn right around. He, he knew he could turn around right now and go back to the city. It was his choice. But every time he stood there, he would see the gate and knowing it was there, 
but ignoring it would make him unbalanced and no doubt sick. Somehow it all made sense and it was his desire to move forward, not backward. I think we as humans are predisposed to want to move forward. So Mike picked up his satchels and bag and moved forward through the gate onto the path that was beginning that was the beginning of his journey. It was a plain dirt path like any other in the in any like any other in any canyon. Mike was excited and moved right on, quickly leaving the gate behind. Mike had just gone through the gate when a dark, shadowy, greenish figure also slipped through. Now notice, this dark figure slipped through when Michael went through the gate. So this dark figure, uh, spoiler alert, this dark figure will be following Michael on his journey. The shrubbery wilted where it walked, and it is capital I-T giving it a personification, giving it a persona, giving it a personality, giving it a entity like nature. The shrubbery wilted where it walked and Michael, and had not Michael moved on, the stench would have alerted him to its presence. It quickly took a position behind Michael Thomas, staying just out of sight, but keeping up with him in his exuberance. Like a swift and cunning phantom, it shadowed Mike's excitement and his glee with an equal amount of hatred and dark purpose. Mike had no idea it was there. So you guys, what do you think this might be? What do you think it is? Um, I had no idea. I just knew it was ominous and I knew that Mike brought with him this it figure, this it character. But do you think you might know what it could be? Do you have any guesses? Write in the comments. Shortly after setting off on the path, the scenery, even the feeling of the land changed greatly for Michael Thomas. Nowhere could he see the sprawling city of Los Angeles or the myriad suburban homes. In fact, there was no hint of civilization, no telephone poles, no airplanes, and no freeways. He had eagerly embarked upon the new dirt path before him like a kid opening gifts at Christmas, plowing ahead without really thinking, and now he realized that with each step, he was going deeper into another world. This journey was taking him into a reality that was far removed indeed from the one he had just experienced. Mike wondered if he was now in some kind of place between earth and heaven where he might start his spiritual schooling, something he assumed would be taking place soon to prepare him for the honor of going home. The trail-like path had slowly become wider and now was almost the width of a road. It was about three to four feet wide without footprints of any kind and was very easy to follow. Mike turned around suddenly. What was that? Something dark and green and quick caught his eye as it darted to the left behind a boulder. Must be the wildlife, Mike thought. The road behind was now a mirror image of where he was heading, a long path that twisted and turned, disappearing over hill after hill in the distance, all within a gloriously lush countryside of green trees, meadows, and rocky outcrops. Flowers dotted the landscape like so many blips of color precisely in the right places on the perfect canvas of nature. Mike stopped to rest. He didn't have a watch, but by looking at the sun's position, he estimated that it was about 2 p.m., time for food. Mike sat down next to the road and ate the final crumbs from the large breakfast he had partially hoarded for his last two snacks. He looked around and felt the stillness. No birds, he thought. He even looked closer at the dirt at his feet. No insects either. This is a really strange place. Mike contemplated it all. He felt the sudden breeze in his air. At least there is air. He looked up at the sky and saw the pure blue of a refreshing grand day. 
Mike realized that there were no more snacks in his bag, but he also knew that he was not alone and that he would be afforded sustenance from God somehow. I had that feeling too, like um, kind of like whatever I need will be provided for me. He remembered the stories about Moses in the desert roaming for 40 years with the tribes of Israel. He remembered how those nomads were fed from the sky and he mused at the story wondering if it was true. All those families following Moses probably had headstrong teenagers just like we do today, he thought. He could just see them turning to their parents, complaining, Hey, we've been at the same rock eight times since I was a kid. Why are you trusting that guy, Moses? He's taking us in circles. The desert just isn't that big. Hello? Mike laughed as he thought about it all and then wondered if he was going to see the same rock shortly, indicating that he also was going in circles. He had no idea where he was going either, just like the Israelites in the desert and without food too. This made him laugh even harder at the similarities. Perhaps the laughter was honored or it, sim or it was simply time, but around the next bend in the widening dirt road, Mike saw it. It was the first house, whoop, whoop, and it was bright blue. Good grief, Mike thought. If Frank Lloyd Wright could see this, he would scream. Mike inwardly chuckled to himself. I hope this is not irreverent, irreverent, he thought, but I've never seen a blue house before. The path actually led up to its door, so he knew that it was supposed to be his first stop. It was also obvious that in that there were no other structures anywhere. As Mike approached the small cottage, he could see that it was more of a cobalt blue and it softly glowed from within somehow. Ooh, this is giving me TARDIS vibes, you guys. You know, Doctor Who's TARDIS. I love Doctor Who. If you love Doctor Who, put it in the comments. I love Doctor Who. Okay. Um, as he turned to go up the path to the door, Mike saw a sign that identified the house as the House of Maps. I'm going to make a note here with my handy dandy highlighter. Okay. Mike realized that this was what he had asked for. Don't you just love it when you get answers from the universe, especially after asking for something? And I'm just going to write that the blue house is the house of maps. I started taking notes in the house, in the third house. And so I don't have detailed notes for the first house. So I'm just going to write house of maps. And um, this is for the blue house. Mike realized that this is what he'd asked for. Now he was getting somewhere. Perhaps the rest of the journey would not be so filled with uncertainty. A current local map would be a valuable commodity in this strange land. The door to the house opened suddenly and out strolled a beautiful large blue creature that exactly matched the color of the house. It was obviously an angelic entity, for like the original angel in the vision, it was larger than life, bigger than a human. Its presence filled the air with a feeling of splendor and a flowery essence. Again, Michael could actually smell the fragrance of the entity. So I'm wondering if we all give out a special fragrance, more so spiritually than physically. Although I'm sure the physical is reflected, uh, is a reflection of the spiritual. The large blue one faced him. Greetings, Michael Thomas of Pure Intent. We have been expecting you. Unlike the angel of the vision, the angel's face was clearly visible and Mike could see the expression of well-being and mirth that seemed to be constant no matter what the entity said. Oh, that's so beautiful. Mike was appreciative of the company and was respectful of the situation. He greeted the angel. Greetings also to you, O oh group. Oh, great blue one, Michael swallowed hard right away. What if the angel didn't want to be called blue? What if his blueness was only a human perception and he wasn't really blue at all? Maybe he doesn't even like blue. Mike sighed at the stream of what-ifs that ran through his human mind. 
I'm blue to every entity, Michael Thomas of pure intent, mused the angel, and I accept your greeting with joy. Please enter the house of maps and prepare to stay the night. This time Mike was glad an angel had read his thoughts, or what was it the original angel had said? He could feel them. In any case, Mike was glad that he had not offended the keeper of the first house. Mike and the Blue Angel, two unevenly matched entities, turned and entered the Blue House. Even as the door shut behind them, two intense, angry, beet-red eyes peered from the ample brush slightly to the left of the house entrance. They were very alert. They didn't get weary. They were silent and very patient. They wouldn't move or blink again until they saw, Michael, saw that Michael Thomas was ready to continue. As Mike entered, he was astounded by what he saw. The inside of the structure was immense. It seemed to go on forever. You guys, I did say this is like the TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside. Um, it seemed to go on forever. Yet the outside was humble and modest. He remembered that the original angel said, had said that all might not be as it seemed. And this was obviously part of the strange new reality of his awareness. Mike wondered about this new perception. Did it have a greater meaning? Mike wandered the large, Mike wandered the huge halls of the House of Maps while following the angel. The interior resembled a library of the highest order, perhaps like some illustrious one you would visit in Europe where important historical books of every kind would be stored. Instead of books on shelves, however, there were seemingly tens of thousands of small wooden holes lining the walls, each containing what Mike felt to be a scroll. The walls seemed to go up forever, and there were holes on both sides of every hall they entered, several stories high. He couldn't see the holes up close yet, but contained in them might be maps, since the name of the house implied such. But why so many of them? The journey around the great rooms seemed endless, and the process, and in the process, not one other living soul was encountered. Are we alone? Mike asked. The angel turned and chuckled. Depends what you mean by alone, I suppose. You are looking at the contracts of every human being on the planet. The angel casually continued walking forward. You guys, this uh, hall of libraries is reminding me of the Akashic Records. So I'm just making a note in the book. Um, and I wonder why the House of Maps would have the contracts of everyone on the planet like is there a correlation between maps and contracts and directions hmm mike stopped and stared reacting with amazement to what the blue entity had just said the distance between them widened as the angel continued to move forward without mike Sensing that he was not being followed, the angel stopped, turned, and waited patiently for Mike. He said nothing. Mike saw the ladders leaning up against the high walls of the multi-story racks of endless wooden cubby holes that contained scroll after scroll. Contracts, the angel had called them. What could that mean? I don't understand this at all, exclaimed Michael as he caught up to the angel. Before your journey is over, you will, replied the angel with a comforting voice. There is nothing here that is frightening, Michael. All is in order, and your visit was expected and is honored. Your intent is pure, and we can see that. Relax and enjoy being loved by us. Aww. So if you're listening, I would guess that also your intent is pure and that there are angelic beings that can see your pure intent and just relax and enjoy being loved. Like this book transmits love. Um, I don't know if you can feel it, but as I read the book the first time, 
I felt like I was home. I felt loved. And it's because I feel like the information is imparting the love and the knowledge. And I don't know. I just feel it. And I don't have an explanation, like a logical explanation for what I'm feeling. But I just feel like the words might be a vibrational match to love. I don't know. You you tell me in the comments, what do you guys feel as I'm reading uh, the book? And I wonder if it's a different experience if the book is read out loud versus if you're reading it silently to yourself and, you know, visually getting the words in. I don't know. But um, this book, it just feels like even though it says a journey home, this book feels like home to me. Uh, let's see. The blue one's words really impacted Mike. There was nothing that any entity could say in the universe that was better than what had just been said to him. Was he starting to feel more? The original angel had given Mike some, kind, some of the same loving vibrations, but he now felt a great deal more of an emotional reaction than he had before. It's a grand feeling to be loved, isn't it, Michael? The blue angel had returned to Mike's side and was towering over him. What is this feeling? Mike asked softly. I almost feel teary. You are shifting into another vibration, Michael. You guys, um, this is the first house, the chapter of the first house. And before I read out loud, I just look over my highlights um, very quickly, like maybe 10 seconds. And as I was doing that for this chapter, I got teary eyed and I have to stop and re-record because um, that was happening to me. So maybe as we are reading and listening to the book, maybe we are shifting as well into another vibration. Okay, so what is this feeling? Mike asked softly. I feel almost teary. You are shifting into another vibration, Michael. I don't understand what that means. Uh, do you have a name, sir? Michael again wondered if he had offended the entity. What if it was a she-angel? Mike had no idea about these those kinds of things. But the angel's demeanor and appearance could easily have been feminine. Just call me blue, said the angel as it winked at Mike. Um... So the angel could have been feminine and that is a piece of non-duality. So I'm just making a note here. Uh, just call me blue, said the angel as it winked at Mike. I'm genderless, but my size and voice tell your mind that I'm male. Call me a he. It's okay. The angel paused to let Mike take it all in. Blue continued, your cellular structure as a human may exist in many vibratory rates, Michael. The one you've grown used to is, let's say, rate number one. You're familiar with it and it has served you well. On this trip, however, it will be necessary for you to move forward to rate six or seven in order to move towards your goal. So um, if I had to guess, because it's not spelled out here, um, rate six or seven would be the sixth house or the seventh house. And the book is full of seven houses or this particular path has seven houses. Right now you're passing into what I call rate two for want of a better name. Each vibratory rate brings more awareness to the actual reality of God. As you have been told, what you are now feeling or what you're feeling now is the awareness of love. Love is thick, Michael. It has physical properties and is powerful. Your new vibratory rate is letting you feel it more than you ever have before. It is the essence of home and will intensify with each house you visit. Michael loved listening to Blue. This was more explanation than he'd received up until now. Uh, are you a teacher? Asked Mike. Yes. Each house of angels, each of the house angels are here for that very purpose, except the last one. Wait till you guys get a hold of this grand last angel. 
I will have truths to reveal to you that are part of my house and the others will as well. When you're finished, you will have a far larger overview of how things work in the universe than you do now. My job is to dispense something to you that you have earned through your expression of intent. You are here in my house to receive your contract map. Mm, contract map. Early tomorrow, I will present it to you and answer a few questions before you continue on your path. It is important that this house is first for it will help you for it will help with your journey. For now, I encourage you to enjoy our gifts of sustenance and rest. Mike again followed Blue, who was starting to feel like a very familiar friend, but a very blue one. He was taken into a wonderful interior garden where every possible fruit and vegetable was being grown in row after row of carefully cultivated architecture. The light, as in every other room, was streaming in through ports in the roof. It filled each area with a natural outdoor essence. He could also smell the aroma of break, baking bread coming from another area of the complex. Who takes care of all this? Mike asked. I only see you. And do you eat? Each house has rooms like this, Michael. And no, I don't eat. This garden exists totally for the humans who are on the same path you are, spending time suspended in this learning experience passing through here so that is a key to where uh, Michael is and what's going on with him so he is spending time suspended suspended is the key word there um, spending time suspended in this learning experience passing through here the garden is attended by many you just don't see them now you will not be without sustenance health and shelter while you walk your path of knowledge it is our way of honoring you and your intent we still have a few more pages left in the chapter but i wanted to reread that one uh passage because it is mind-blowing. I'm still trying to fathom what was said. Each vibratory rate brings more awareness of the actual reality of God. So I guess like if you're third dimension, no, um, you'll have a certain reality of God. And then like if you're more fourth or fifth dimensional, you'll have even more awareness of the reality of God. Um, what you're feeling now is the awareness of love. Love is thick. It has physical properties, you bet it does, and is powerful. So once you ascend, your new vibratory rate is letting you feel it more than you ever have before. So if you ascend, you'll feel more love as you go deeper in the ascension process. And uh, that is home, that's the essence of home. And as we journey on, we should be feeling more love because it says it will intensify with each house you visit. Okay, journeying on in the chapter. Mike started to feel the overwhelming sense of being cared for as the two continued on into the other rooms, the human following the large blue entity. Finally, they reached a quaint sleeping area, private quarters, with a wonderful canopy bed and pristine white lace sheets, inviting Mike to plop his weary body down, overstuffed pillows beckoned to him, offering the comfort and security of a deep sleep. Mike was astounded by the degree of preparation. All of this is for me? Mike was impressed. You and others, Michael, it is prepared for any who had the kind of intent you do. In the adjacent room was a feast that Mike could not even begin to consume. There was more succulent food than he had ever seen, much more than just one person could eat. Eat what you wish, Michael, suggested Blue. None will be wasted, but do not hoard the extra. <laughs> 
Resist the temptation to carry it with you. This is a test of your process, something you will understand fully later. <laughs> Do not hoard the extra. My friend um, and I had a conversation about clutter and not needing more and, con and consummation, consumption, not taking more than you need and not consuming more than you need. Um, Blue left Mike alone and exited the area. Mike dropped his bags, immediately sat down and ate like he had seldom done before. He took care not to be glutton-like, but he filled his belly fully with the luscious cuisine. His eyelids were starting to droop and the surroundings created a degree of comfort that Mike hadn't experienced since he had been a child in the care of his loving parents. Oh, that I could sustain this feeling, my thought. It may be a human all worth it. Mike got up from his meal, feeling that he would somehow address the issue of the dirty dishes in the morning. He was tired. He was barely able to get out of his clothes, which he had hung on the provided hooks on the wall. He fell into bed. The warm cocoon of peaceful sleep came fast. In the morning stillness, Mike arose feeling incredibly refreshed. He washed up and made his way to the dining area only to find that all the dishes from the night before had been removed and a wonderfully prepared breakfast bread was in its place. Part of his awakening that morning had come from the smell of fresh fruits, potatoes, and delicious bread. Oh, part of his, I said fruits, I meant to say eggs. Part of his awakening that morning had come from the smell of fresh eggs, potatoes, and delicious bread. Mike enjoyed his solitary breakfast alone, and in his solitude, he again wondered about the appropriateness of his request to go home. Is it wrong to want out of the earth experience, he asked himself. What about those left behind? They won't be able to experience the levels of vibratory enhancement that he would. Was it fair? A feeling of melancholy began to wash over him as he thought about his friends and the people he worked with. He was even concerned about his former lover. What is happening, wondered Mike. I'm starting to feel empathy for everyone. This is not like the me I have always been, this is actually painful. I'm starting to regret having something that others don't have. Does this mean I'm in the wrong? Should I go back? It is inevitable that you ask yourself that question, Michael, said Blue, who suddenly appeared in a doorway and had once again tuned into Mike's feelings. Although startled, Mike was delighted to see Blue and greeted him with a nod. Speak to me of these things, Blue, said Michael. I honestly need direction. I'm beginning to wonder if I have done the correct thing. The workings of spirit are marvelous, Michael Thomas of pure intent, said Blue. And the postulate of human enlightenment is this. Take care of yourself first, and the honor of your journey will be passed to those around you in a synchronous way, for the intent of the one will always affect the many. Dang, that is deep. So I'm going to read it again, and then I'm going to summarize what I understand this to be. Take care of yourself first, and honor, and the honor of your journey will be passed to those around you in a synchronous way, for the intent of the one will always affect the many. And we will see an example of this in another house. Which house was that? Um, it's the house where love, the meaning of love is displayed. But take care of yourself first. That reminds me of being on an airplane. You have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Then you can help others. Take care of yourself first. And the honor of your journey will be passed to those around you in a synchronous way. So if you take care of yourself, the other people will pick up on that and they will be taken care of, I feel like. And uh, when it says the intent of the one always affects the many, it's like the choice of the one will uh, help the many. 
which is not what we are programmed. We are programmed to sacrifice the few for the greater good, but you don't really have to sacrifice the few for the greater good if you take care of yourself first. So this is not what we're taught in school. If you take care of yourself first, others will be taken care of. Uh, moving on, again, I don't fully understand, Blue replied a confused Mike. Even though you do not understand at the moment, Michael, your actions will affect others, giving them opportunities for their own decisions, something they would not have had without your decision to be right here, right now. Trust that these things are true and do not be reproachful with yourself. <sighs> So I just got another download. It's kind of personal, but maybe I could share it in a way that's vague. Hmm. So I wanted to go somewhere with my friend and we did not end up going together. But in my disappointment, I had a prayer and that prayer was, what is something that I never considered in this situation? And then um, there was a flash of insight and I ended up going to Paris. So, yeah. You, even though your actions affect others, it doesn't necessarily mean that it affects others in a negative way. Um, we have to be more mindful of the 4D and um, instead of people affecting you negatively, how can they affect you in a positive manner, giving you an opportunity for something that you may not have even considered? Mike felt a burden lifted from his soul. Blue hadn't been able to fully make him understand why things work spiritually but the assurance was enough and he felt much better about continuing. Mike picked up his belongings and left the private dining and sleeping quarters. He stepped back into the great hallway that led to the door he originally entered yesterday from the outside. Blue walked slowly behind him as Mike marveled at the immensity of it all. Blue said nothing as he noticed the bagel and other breadsticks protruding from Mike's sack. So uh, apparently Mike failed that test. Where are we going? Asked Mike. Should I continue in this direction? He knew that he was about to receive. Oh, going back to Blue noticing the bread. Like, I feel like spiritual people are the most non-judgmental people they don't have to feel the need to like out argue you or persuade you to do something blue was observational and he just observed the breadsticks he didn't say anything um, but because he also is an angel he probably knew what was going to happen to the bread ahead of time and um, when I was at my situation at work People are like, you know, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to be a bitch and all this. Oops. Well, this isn't for kids. So um, excuse the cursing. I should have said B word. Shoot. But I'm not going to edit because that's going to take a lot of time. But and I want to finish this book. Hopefully today there are 12 chapters and I want to do the study questions. So I don't know. But anyways, um, I, even though I was at work and I was working for this woman and I, I debated about writing a book, I kind of, she kind of reminds me of Cruella DeVille. <laughs> um, I was just in observation mode. I love observing people and sometimes people have to get the lessons for themselves. I don't believe in like, telling everyone about themselves. I don't believe in telling them what they need to do because I feel like kind of with like with this book, when people are ready to take the journey of self-knowledge, they will. And I don't really have to say or do anything. And I just observe. Sometimes I'll do a whole pono pono prayer like I'm sorry please forgive me I love you thank you to clear the energy sometimes I do sometimes I don't but I just know that things will work out 
and I give people the space to be. Um, let's see. So where are we going? Asked Mike. Should I continue in this direction? He knew that he was about to receive his very own map and he wanted Blue to take the lead. You may stop now, said Blue. He paused in the middle of a huge blue ornate wall where Blue silently walked over to the fall wall near a ladder. Come over here, Michael. Uh, Mike did as he was told and before long, Blue had him climbing a very tall ladder on a quest to find a specific cubicle where his map resided. As Mike clawed his way up the ladder, he noticed that each cubicle hole had a name on it. There were actually two names for each compartment. One name looked like it was in an Arabic lettering and one was in Roman lettering. Rather than being placed alphabetically, the boxes were arranged into some other system unknown to Mike, but no doubt understood by Blue. Blue had told him exactly where to look, and he was now just a few feet from the place Blue had indicated. Finally, he saw it. The box marked Michael Thomas along with the other strange lettering that was all that was on all the others, probably angle, angel language, Michael thought to himself. His instructions were to not look around, but to retrieve the scroll from the selected box and return it to the floor for examination. Y'all, I would have been looking up and down, okay? Mike had just pulled out the scroll and was starting, and was starting down the ladder when his eye caught another group of names. And his heart stopped. His mom and dad were also here. The arrangement was in family groups. So when I went to Paris, I ended up meeting with my aunt and uncle. And I had no idea they would be in Paris. Like how strange and bizarre and ridiculously good was that? It's crazy. Like I guess maybe our family were connected in some kind of soul contract sort of way. I don't know. So the arrangement was in family groups. That was the spiritual system used in a great hall. Mike knew he was absolutely forbidden to touch another scroll, but he lingered a bit too long as he examined some of the names that made no sense to him. Why were these other names with his family? He wondered. Michael Blue inquired from below. Coming, sir, <laughs> said a sheep is Mike. Like, me and Mike are eye to eye with this because I want to know, like, I want to know who is in my soul group. Like, you know, who else should have been in my family or is in my family? Blue knew what he was thinking, but Mike would not ask the kind of question that might violate the protocol of the sacred place. Pensively, Mike made his way down the long blue ladder and presented the scroll to Blue. Blue looked at Mike for a long moment, and in that steady gaze, there were no secrets. Instead, there was a transmittal of gratitude from Blue that Mike had honored the anointed ways of the system, and Mike felt the love of God permeate his very being. Both Blue, both Mike and Blue smiled broadly at the wordless communication. Mike was starting to feel that words were no longer necessary. And that usually is a more high vibrational thing. Because like when you're in your dreams, you're usually in another reality or a higher dimension, depending on what kind of dreams you have. And um, you're not speaking, like you're not using your physical lips, you're telepathically communicating or feeling what the other person is transmitting. Uh, Mike was starting to feel that words were no longer necessary. It seemed that he could communicate anything he wanted to Blue without saying it out loud. This is weird, Mike thought. You guys, I have tried to communicate silently to people, but I wonder if my face just doesn't do that. I don't know. My eyes may not do that. I'm going to have to like look in the mirror and see like, I don't know. Uh, let's see. It seemed that he could communicate anything he wanted to blue without saying it out loud. This is weird, thought Mike. 
Not as strange as what you are about to see, replied Blue to Mike's thoughts. Rats, thought Mike. I can't get away with anything in here. Blue ignored Mike's latest thoughts and placed the small scroll on the table. He then turned and faced Mike. Michael Thomas of Pure Intent, Blue formally stated, This is your life map. In some form, you will have it with you from this point on. It is given in love and will be one of the most valuable items you will own. Just circling life map. Uh, Mike suddenly rem remembered the original angel's words about the new energy being far more current than before. Mike asked the obvious question, is the map current? More so than you might desire, was the whimsical answer from the tall blue one. Mike actually thought he heard blue snicker. The tall blue one, is that the Andromedans? Like some people say they see tall blue creatures and I think they're called the Andromedans, but I digress. Um, let's see. Blue handed the map to Mike and wordlessly invited him to examine it for himself. Mike took it and held it to his chest for a moment, savoring the gift as a child would. He felt the sacredness of the moment and opened the map with a ceremonial flair that made Blue smile. Blue knew what was coming. All sense of wonderment and expectation disappeared as Mike uncoiled the small scroll. It was blank. Or was it? Right in the middle of the scroll, visible only by careful examination, was a group of letters and symbols. Mike bent over and peered at the grouping. An arrow pointed to a small red dot. Next to the dot were the words, you are here. A small symbol for the cottage labeled House of Maps was next to the dot. <laughs> I just got a download and um, yeah, I'll leave it at that, but I'm going to make a note. Uh, next to the dot where the words you are here, a small symbol for the cottage labeled House of Maps was next to the dot. A small but richly detailed area was drawn around the dot for about an inch or so on the paper, including the path Mike had followed. Then it stopped incomplete. The map showed Mike only where he was in a detailed, in detailed a small area extending only a hundred yards or so in every direction. So it was a very small map. What is this? Asked Michael, not too respectfully. Is this an angel joke, Blue? I have come all this way to the House of Maps to receive a wonderful sacred scroll that tells me that I'm in the House of Maps. Things are not always as they seem, Michael Thomas of Pure Intent. Take this gift and keep it with you. Blue really didn't answer the question at all. Um, and that's how some spiritual people that have gifts of insight, they don't answer everything. It's like you kind of have to figure it out for yourself with the map. It doesn't show you like the full picture. It only shows you a few feet. So like um, the download I got is that you might go to an intuitive person for guidance and then um, they're not going to give you all of your life's answers because some things you just have to decide like things are being decided and it's creating your reality. So that's why um, you might get an intuition about someone and then it's wrong because they might make a, a change of choice or you might change your mind and make a change of choice and it was just funny to me because um the download i received was something personal to me and it just like it just made sense it clicked and it was just funny um okay so things are not always as they seem michael thomas of pure intent take this gift and keep it with you blue really Blue didn't really answer the question at all. Mike knew intuitively that it wouldn't do any good to ask again, so he rolled up the seemingly useless map 
and placed it in a sack. He was clearly disappointed. You guys, I want to know everything. And um, so, yeah, I could I can understand the disappointment. But knowing what I know now, it's it's just part of the process. You won't ever get all the answers. Um, Blue led the way back to the front door and stepped outside into the fresh air. With Mike following him, the angel faced Mike. Michael Thomas of pure intent. There is one question that I must ask you before you continue on your journey home. What is the question, my blue friend? asked Mike. Michael Thomas of pure intent, do you love God? Blue was very serious. Mike found it strange that the original angel had asked the same question in almost the same tone. He wondered what the significance of such repetition was. Dear magnificent blue teacher, since you can see my heart, you know that I indeed love God. Mike stood and faced the angel as he delivered his honest answer. So it is, said Blue, and with that, he stepped into the small blue cottage and closed the door firmly. Michael had a feeling of sudden disconnection. Do these guys ever say goodbye, he wondered. The weather was balmy and pleasant. Mike picked up his bag and his sack of supplies, including the bread he had removed from the blue house, and he started down the dirt road in a direction he knew would bring him to yet another house of lessons. He started to review all of the humorous elements in the events that had occurred while in the house of maps. Imagine a map that only tells you where you are at the moment. How useless! Of course I know where I am. What a funny place this is, thought Mike. Peals of laughter echoed from the hills as Michael Thomas of pure intent bellowed his enjoyment of the situation to the rocks and trees as he continued on his path home. His laughter also fell on the wart-covered green ears of a very dark entity lurking just 200 yards behind him. Mike had no idea that this dark shape had patiently waited for him to resume his journey and was once again following his every step. This thing didn't belong in this realm. It didn't need to eat or sleep. It had no joy. Only the determination that Michael Thomas would never ever reach the last house. Its agenda was set and it was closing the distance between itself and and Michael Thomas of Pure Intent. So that is the end of the chapter of the first house. Um, just note, when I think of entities, I always think about dark entities, but here the angels are entities too. We are entities, and so entities can be light, both light or dark. Okay, so that is it, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!